Oh, what a lad. Well, today I have one of the more popular guests to have come on What a Lad already, where he told his incredible story, where he went from picking asparagus to the Warriors to the Hurricanes <laughs> and then, of course, the All Blacks. And he then somehow was allowed to head over to France, but now he's back. And I am very keen to hear what is next for the most damaging ball runner in the world of rugby. He is one of the greats, Nani Laumape. Welcome, brother. Cheers, Jimmy. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. Mate, good to have you back on. Like I said, um, your first episode was one of the greats. Uh, I listened back to it the other day. <laughs> awesome to hear your journey, but it means we sort of skip forward your journey now and we can get straight into the good stuff. So, mate, you're back from France. How was it over there? Yeah, France was... Um... Yeah, the lifestyle there was, was pretty hissing, eh? Um, my family, my uh, Mavis and Mavis and the boys loved it, eh? They, um, I think that was one of the great things that, you know, I got to experience was um, that my kids got to experience nothing that <clears throat> that I ever did growing up. And, um, you know, they went to go to Disneyland and that was a big dream of mine. And yeah. to my kids to do that was pretty, was pretty cool, eh? So, no... France was was good. Eh? It was, had its challenges in that because obviously it was pretty hard not to speak the language. Um, but in terms of lifestyle and um, like the actual city itself, and no, it was it was pretty hissing. Eh? Really, yeah. Yeah, was your French? Do you not pick it up like Victor? No, oh, you know, but <laughs> no, nah, not really. But not that fast. Victor's pretty <laughs> onto it. I'm pretty slow uh, in the brain, bro. So. <laughs> so um, but now Vic's a natural. I saw one of um, when I was doing, I was doing like the game interview, but in the home, the man started going full French. I was like, this guy, <laughs> nah. so yeah, mate. But it looked like you're living a pretty cool lifestyle over there, yeah, man. It was um, it was pretty cool, like um, yeah, definitely felt like um, you know, all the stuff that you see on the movies, yeah, was definitely like um, was definitely like. Um, it felt like I was, yeah, kind of just living in the movie and, um, you know, every day I went to training, I was going past the Archeon, so it was okay. pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. So, yeah, that no, was pretty cool. And what was the rugby like? Yeah, the rugby is pretty, uh, pretty different to back home and, um, I kind of didn't, didn't really play my best footy over there, um, in France. I just, yeah, just for me, I just, um, yeah, it probably takes a year to get used to playing um, rugby overseas. But mm. like I said, uh, I just found it really hard to communicate with teammates just because I couldn't speak the language. Um, but towards the end, I started um, started playing a lot better. Um, but yeah, there was <laughs> there was a time on the field where I was just like, oh, you know, just yeah, the language was tough, bro. But it was a good challenge. Mate, that's interesting. Obviously, I I haven't followed it really closely, but I always see the highlights. And mate, as always, coming up with some massive plays when you're needed. Um, looked like you're carving it up over there, but interesting to hear that you had some struggles on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, from just being honest, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Struggled at the start, but then towards the end, started finding my feet again, and then yeah, and then the old mate blew his calf, and then. She was all over. How did the um, styles compare for you? Like, obviously, coming from the Canes, All Blacks, how did the style of rugby compare to over there? Was it more kick chase? Yeah, it was more, um, yeah, it was definitely more, um, definitely, um, yeah, I think for them, they uh, are in, in France, top 40, and they like to kick for penalties. Mm. Uh, you know, everything was go for the three points, but for me, I was just trying to tell the, the skip, kick it in the corner, let's have a crack. And in the in the scrums and stuff, they would hold the ball in, and I'm like, you know, they're trying to scrum for a penalty, but um, you know, for me, I I want to play with the ball and stuff, but mm-hmm. you know, that's just the way that um, you know, the way way that they play up there, and um, definitely really physical though. Whew. So. I'm, uh, Pretty, pretty massive dude in the top 14 and, uh, yeah, definitely physical, really physical there. Mate, and obviously um, the pros, um, your wallet's looking pretty heavy now. <laughs> nah, bro, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> Grateful, bro, I'm just, 
just grateful, bro. <laughs> but did you have more years on your contract? I'm sure you signed for longer than uh, what you've been over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, had a sign three year deal and um, yeah, sign three year deal and uh, yeah, back after one year. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, things don't work out um, sometimes, but I think for me, I just had to do what's best for um, um, for myself and, and my family. So, was that mainly because you were struggling yeah. on the field rugby wise, or was that a family? The family was struggling with at, over there living. What what was the sort of reason behind the the move back? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. For me, like I just um, obviously I got my oldest daughter who still lives here in um, in New Zealand. And oh, true. She didn't go over. Really tough. No, nah, no. Nah, um, yeah, so she wasn't allowed to come over. So oh, yeah. um, just found it really tough not to to see her. Mm. Uh, you know, it was yeah, it was pretty tough to be away from her and. I'm obviously with COVID and stuff and the bubble and stuff, she couldn't really come over, et cetera, et cetera. So um, being away from here was tough. Um, but yeah, also just wanted to be close, a little bit closer to my family and stuff. So um, yeah, and then um, some things happened that I just couldn't, uh, I just couldn't turn down. So in the, the day, um, I was always going to do what was best for me and my family. Mm. So how hard was that to get out of your contract? Sometimes that can be pretty, a pretty niggly process and pretty daunting having to go tell the big dog at Stard that you want out of the contract. How was that conversation? Oh, no, we, it went pretty well. Um, we were pretty well. Obviously, um, it was tough at the time, but um, I felt like uh, it was just... You know, for me, I just had to be honest with them that mm. I was struggling. Um, you know, that couldn't be around my family, wasn't really enjoying um, my rugby and stuff. So, um, obviously, you know, for my family side and stuff. So, yeah, I just, I pretty much just laid it out um, and just told them how I was feeling, um, how I felt I was going to go in the future. And, um, yeah, and then they kind of just understood it. Um, both parties um, agreed that, you know, the best thing was um, was to part ways. Crazy. And then, obviously, you've spoken a little bit about an opportunity that has come about, and I honestly have never had so many questions around the same thing on the Instagram coming in. What is Nani Laomapi up to next? So um, what is the plans for you going forward? Yeah, uh, yeah so the plan for me is... Um, I'm going to sign with KB Steelers for the next three years. Wow. Um, there we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just a bit, <laughs> bit, bit closer to home and uh, a bit closer to home so that um, my daughter could come over to Japan or, um, you know, if I need to come back, I could shoot shoot back. Um it was a bit closer instead of being two days away. Yeah. So, um but also just, yeah, great opportunity, great club. Um, you know, the likes of Dan Carter and Cruds were there. Mm. So, and plus Smithy um, has a bit of involvement in there. So I feel like for me, it would be easier to connect um, with the staff as they've got a New Zealand coach um, there at the moment. So yeah. um, Japan is all about attacking footy, as you know yourself. So... Um, that's the game that I want to play and I just feel like I'll be getting tested more um, in Japan. So, yeah, but closer to home was the main reason. Right. And they are a club renowned for having very deep pockets, so I could imagine they threw a fair amount of cash at you. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. I'm just <laughs> happy to learn Japanese, bro. <laughs> happy to learn Japanese, bro. <laughs> No, but you will suit the style of um, footy over there, no doubt. Like, it is very attacking. Um, mate, your power game will be destructive over there. There's, um, they're a little bit smaller, but, <laughs> oh, jeez, I feel sorry for some of those uh, 10s and 12s uh, coming up against you because, oh, mate, as a lot of players in around New Zealand rugby know, the power that you can produce in a bunt is, is pretty special. No, I think for me, bro, I'm just... Um probably in a point in my career where I just want to be happy. 
um, doing my job and um, I feel like if I can get myself mentally sharp, um, then hopefully I can perform to my ability. Just, uh, yeah, just, um, yeah, I think good thing for me is just knowing that I'll be a bit closer to home. Mm-hmm. I can see my daughter, um, you know, so also my family can come over as well. I'm a bit closer as well, so that'll be cool. Mm. Was there ever um, was there ever a thought of for you to return back to New Zealand and play back here? Uh, yeah, it was definitely thought about it. Yep. Um, definitely thought about it, but uh, I think for me that um, yeah, I think for me that side's closed. Um, hopefully, one day I'll return, but I think for me it's just. Um, yeah, that's the situation I'm in, and uh, never know. One day I might return, but um, yeah. But at the moment, I'm really excited to join uh, Kobe, and um, pretty keen to rip in. But yeah, um, doing some training with the Turbo lads at the moment. Oh, are you? And, um, You're not going to put the boots on, are you? Yeah, so um, but I'm itching to put my feet uh to put the boots on, eh, bro? Um, but um, it's also me, like training with the two bay boys mm. seeing a bunch of young fresh faces and a bunch of old faces and especially training with my best mate jason emery which is pretty cool yeah um so hopefully i know i know my age is probably going to be <laughs> angry but yeah i'm pretty keen to jam for the two bays eh? and try to do something great there. <laughs> when do you have to be to, when do you have to be back to i'll be, be over at japan yeah so my contract doesn't start to october so Oh yeah, um, it's a bit of time. I've got a bit of time here, so. So you mentioned uh, coming back to New Zealand and having like sort of. It feels like talking to you have sort of unfinished business here, but I am very keen to hear like what's sort of stopping you come back to New Zealand because obviously all the fans in New Zealand want you back. Uh, everyone on the question said that they wanted you playing for their respective um, Super Rugby franchise. So, um, sort of what what's stopping you coming back? And becoming an All Black again. Oh, this yeah, it's probably two parts to it. Um, yeah, I think for me it was, uh, you know, I offered to come back, but um, you know, I was given an option to, um, you know, to come back, and um, obviously the the Hurricanes were interested, and obviously the Two Bears would be interested, but um, I was yeah, I was told by, um, yeah, I was I was offered a contract that um, that the newbies. I offered and and I just felt like in the point of my career, um, you know, I know what I bring to the table yeah. and I back myself hundred percent. So in the, the day, um, for me it was I had to provide. Um, in the, the day I'm provided for my kids and stuff, so there was no way that I was gonna take a back step. Yeah. Um, in, but my ego and my my competitiveness, you know, still has unfinished business, and like I want to come back and. And give it a crack and prove it to myself, not to anyone else, but just prove it to myself that that I can still do it. But um, in a day, I have to look after my family, and um, you know, for me, but coming from growing up with, with not much, um, my, you know, my biggest fear is finishing the game with nothing to to show for, you know. And I feel like after after my rugby career, and if I had to go back to work, that you know to you know, I don't know if I had to go do a nine to five job that I hate, you know, mm. I feel like my rugby career would be a waste, you know, because in the, the day you can get all these trophies, but for me, um, putting my kids in a better situation that I could um, put them in a better situation that, that I was growing up. And I feel like that's a bigger, bigger reward to me than any um, trophy or any accolades. So. Mm. Um, and also the second one was, you know, I feel like, um, yeah, for me, I feel like I closed that chapter on, on New Zealand rugby. And I feel like for me now, I was focusing on playing good rugby for Kobe. And if I'm good enough to play for Tonga, I'll put my hand up uh, for Tonga and, and uh, represent the red and white um, if I'm good enough and if I get picked. What is the process there at the moment? Where are you at? I know you've called out um, World Rugby a few times trying to get them to give you uh, an exemption, but where are you at? Are you a chance to get to the Rugby World Cup with Tonga? Nah, so I'm, I think I'm a month late at the moment, oh, which is uh, kind of annoying. Yeah. So, 
yeah, I just feel like, yeah, I don't know why you should have to stand down three years uh, if you're going to go play for your, you know, your country, your, your parents' birth, you know. You see what the rugby league boys are doing, um, you know, the movement that the Tongan boys did. I um, mean, that pretty much made everyone watch rugby league international again. And, mm. you, you know, you saw the support that Tonga got um, from all their big names going back and, um, yeah, uh, to me it just sounds crazy that you have to stand down three years, wanting to play for your, you know, um, play for your your parents' nation. It just doesn't sound right to me. Even, um, you know, doesn't sound right. Mm. But you know, that is the rules, and um, you know. But imagine if, you know, that imagine if there was other players that could jump on board earlier, so that you know that the that the smaller nations could get them in their prime instead of um, waiting three years and, you know, they're a bit older, a bit, you know, so mm. this is my little 1% anyway. Mate, it, so. it would be awesome to see you at the Rugby World Cup with Tonga. They've obviously already got some pretty talented backs out there already um, playing in the Pacific Nations Cup recently. Uh, geez, you would add a nice string to that uh, back line. Yeah, because... Um, I heard you're half tongue, eh? I think they, they need a first five or something. So I'm sure your name is. <laughs> so you got a little bit of tongue blood in you, mate. Oh, mate, they've got Willie Havili who runs a very good cut in. Oh, mate, I think he would. Yeah, he does. You He's outside nice him no. um, could be dangerous with the likes of Piertel and Falau and Fiki Toa. Mate, that is that is a pretty special back line. Uh, I think I'll just be in the 923. I think I'll just go for. Nah. <laughs> No, no, but I'll be, I'll be, yeah. Like I said, man, like if I'm good enough, then I'll definitely put my hand up. But um, at the moment, focus on Kobe um, and just being a fan. And then once this little, once this little, uh, little lockdown is done, then I'll put my hand up for mm. Tonga. And what about um, league? Obviously, you could play for um, Tonga in league. Was that ever a um, option for you to go back to the league, go back to the Warriors or another club? Yeah, definitely. Like um, for me, like you know, I I played league when you know I played league early in my career, and I probably wasn't. Um, I was probably just mucking around and um, just didn't really do. wasn't really professional. I wasn't really professional, and um, I didn't really take care of my body and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, I still, you know, I feel like I have a little bit of unfinished business in rugby league, but. I feel like if I went back now, it's probably uh, probably too late uh, for me to go back now and give it a crack. So, um, yeah, still, like, yeah. But then I think about the league preseason, and I'm like, nah, I'm all good. <laughs> but come on, bro, you see me run, you see me do foot in the stocks. <laughs> okay. Is the yeah. is the league preseason way harder than any Super Rugby preseason you ever did? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Just yeah, it's like it's like eight to ten weeks before Christmas, yeah. and then you got another another I think eight weeks after Christmas. So. Yeah, but you know, obviously, in in rugby, you only get you know, is it two weeks before Christmas? <laughs> yeah, something like that, two three weeks, and then, um, and then you know, you got. Probably what three weeks after New Year's, and then two pre-match uh, pre-season games, and then you're into it, you know. So it's definitely a lot of running a league. I, yeah, I believe league is a tough game, bro. Mm. Tough, tough game, mate. That's interesting because I always thought you were struggling in the Hurricanes pre-seasons. You must have just got that uh, face going where you pretend you're working hard, but uh, <laughs> you're actually sweet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. I was, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd. Yeah, I was always in the extras group. <laughs> Cheers, Davy. Cheers, Dash. <laughs> oh, but look at you now. Oh, on plenty with Kobe, mate. Like I said at the start, as always, um, I do put the questions out to the Instagram, and I did get heaps. So I am keen to try and get through as many as I can, and a lot of them were obviously around the All Blacks, um, and would you return back to New Zealand? Everyone wants you back at their franchise, but we did get a few other good ones as well. Money and goals aside, which code did you enjoy the most and why? Nah, for me, I definitely enjoyed the Hurricanes. Um, 
the most. That's the team that that I um yeah, that's the team that I just loved running up at Westpac Stadium. Um, for me, yeah, I still think about those times that I'd run out in the you know in the stadium in Wellington. Um, for me, it doesn't get much better than that. Playing for the Hurricanes. Alongside next to you. Mate, you did some special things on that field in front of those fans. I see why it sits so highly in your memories. <laughs> Mate, it'd be good to see you again too. Jeez, it would be good to have you back. Uh, I think I'm getting I think I'm on that declining <laughs> side now, bro. I'm getting old. You'd look quite good in red and black too, by sure. the way. <laughs> Congrats on that coaching job, mate. <laughs> mate, yeah. Kobe Crusaders, you're, you're slowly getting into the red. I, I like, I like where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next one. How has Europe changed your game? Uh, um, yeah, I think for me it's just probably more my um my kicking game. Um, you know, obviously in um in Europe. You know they like to put little little grubbers through and and pressure the the teams um, that you know that way because mm. uh, in Europe they defend a little bit different. They only have one at the back and they have fourteen in the line, which is different to New Zealand when they have um, when they have two fullbacks and you know and, and line speed. But in Europe they kind of fourteen in the line and one at the back, and it's it's pretty hard to break the line um, in Europe. So. Definitely looking for more kick space, especially with the um with the fifty two fifty two and two now. So True. yeah. Mate, you might be if you go back to league, you'll be in the halves. No, I think I'll be eighteenth <laughs> man, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. How to overcome being underestimated? This is a good one. I think for me, yeah. I think for me when um when that Blues article, I mean, so when um, when that article came out on the week when we played the Blues, um, right. you know, it came out and then right, I just read it like every time I ran out to training and then I did it before the game and I was, yeah, I was in the mood <laughs> that game and I think for me it's just funny something that, that ticks you off and that article definitely ticked me off and... Um, yeah, and then, yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying read the article, but I'm just saying, like, you know, yeah. find something that ticks you off, and then it'll definitely get you um, over that line. Well, I, well, that's what happened to me, so. Mate, and you, yeah. you, geez, you hit beast mode that game. That was one of the greats. But how was the media <laughs> over in France? Was Did you feel media pressure over there, or were they nice to you, or? Sure, I don't even know, because yeah. I, I can't read French, so. <laughs> They could have been saying whatever, and I was like, <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, just saying, yeah, thanks, you know, merci, <laughs> au revoir, you know. Yeah. So, you know, they could have been, I think they were running um, stuff for me when I first got there, and then, um, then you know, towards the end, they were starting to um, ease into a little bit, and but it was, yeah, it was, you know, um, it is what it is, you know, if you're not performing, um, you know, but yeah. It definitely eased up towards the end when I was playing better. So Okay, next one. Best player, league or union that you played with? Um the best player that I have played with. Um definitely Bodie, yeah. Bodie. Um Yeah. When I was with him in the Hurricanes, he was just he was yeah, he was on fire bro and um I just love running like you know, when he would attack the line, I'd just love being there mm. um, with them because you know, at the end of the day, they they had to mark one of like you know, they had to double team one of us, otherwise one of us would be gone. And um, so I just felt like, and plus Bodie did things that only Bodie could do. You know, he was that quick, and he was just so calm about everything he did. Mm. Uh, no, he's definitely the best player that um, that I you know and. He would just pull the trigger on a lot of things that other players would um, second guess. He'll yeah. just, if he saw me on the wing, he'll just cross field it to me straight away. Or um, so, yeah, no, nah, definitely bad. He's, he's a def- freak, eh, hey, mate? Uh, 
Love that answer. Couldn't agree more. Okay, next one. This is from another Hurricane teammate of yours, via Fafita. He wants to know how much your new contract is worth. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, not, nothing, bro. Just like I said, bro, just grateful to learn Japanese, bro. Just I'm going to be eating some ramen. <laughs> Right, the media's going to get hold of how much your contract's worth. Eh? Some, some, I don't know how they do it, but sometimes they get figures, eh? Um, and you one, or oh, I think it's going to blow some people's minds. No, I think, it, no. Like I said, bro, I just want to <laughs> taste some ramen and uh, learn some Japanese. <laughs> okay, next question. Shot wire. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, next question is from our major sponsor, Swish. So if you could get a video shout-out from any celebrity, who would it be and why? Uh, for, yeah, I think for me it would definitely be LeBron James. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> just, Similar. Just a big fan. Just a big fan and just loves what he does for, um, for the, you know, obviously he made a school. Um, he definitely made a school um, for, you know, back at his his state in that. Um, so that's one of my goals as well. So I think for me, obviously not a school, but... True, Jeez, I was going to say, sort of... <laughs> man, this contract is <laughs> worth heaps. <laughs> nah, definitely not a school, but like... Yeah, yeah, give back. Definitely not a school, but just like a program that helps um, unprivileged kids with rubby boots and mm. stuff like that. So obviously with um, the J- Japan season not being as long, um, I'll definitely have more time back in Palmy, so uh, for me, I could definitely help out with the next generation. Mate, you are an absolute lad. Love that. Okay, next one. Apparently, you're a dark horse goal kicker. Really? Someone G me up or... Nah, <laughs> nah bro. <laughs> At least someone... If I would, if I would have to, yeah. If it came down to it, bro, I would, I would have a crack, but nah. <laughs> if it went de- if it went to a penalty shootout, needed five kickers, would you would you put your hand up as one of them? Depends on what team I'd be in, eh? Like, yeah. Tonga yeah, in the well, in the rugby world cup final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hard out, bro. Yeah, you're I'd, in there, eh? Yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely, I'd want that pressure because um, if I miss, you know. In, people came at me I wouldn't really care I'll just mm. keep going off my life you know so um, yeah take one for the team <laughs> the confidence of the man though you, you back yourself in any any situation like that that way yeah well I, I think for me it's just you have to back yourself otherwise what you're doing you know for me is like you know I, I you know you have to back yourself to, you know because what's going to get you up in the mornings when you're not um, wanting to train, you know, so obviously me backing myself, um, that means no disrespect to anyone else, but if you put in the work, then, you know, why not uh, go out there and back yourself and express yourself? Um, obviously, I would, don't back myself in a um, goal-kicking penalty shooter, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'll give it a crack because, you know, um, anything for the team. Mate, how good. That's why you're one of the greats. Okay, next one. Where are the All Blacks and New Zealand Rugby Union going wrong at the moment? A lot of people want to know this. What's what's wrong up top? Not uh, I, I, for me, I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure, but I'm just trying to figure out, um, you know, um, just trying to figure out my situation. I can't really speak mm. too much on the NZRU. Yeah. Um so know, that's a load of this question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think someone's trying to throw me on the bus. <laughs> no, jokes. But yeah, no, look, I actually don't know. Um, yeah. I think for me, I'd love to see old, um, old rugby players um, involved more in, um, you know, in, in ZIU. So, but mm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't have the answer, but. I know, I know that they will bounce back, and I know um, they're heading in a good direction. Cool. Okay, last question. One piece of advice for a Waterlad listener. I know you've you've picked up a lot since your move over to France, so I'm always keen to hear a bit of advice from you. Yeah, I think for me it's just uh, um, 
think for me it's just family first, always. Um, you know, end of the day, um, you know, you'll have people come in and out of your life, but end of the day, family's there um, to the end. So um, for me, it's just about um, taking care of my family and, um, you know, like I said, um, you know, I'd, you know, I'd give up my dream just to so that my family could live a, mm. a better life. So, um, yeah, family first always. Mate, that's powerful. I like that, and that's obviously coming from someone <laughs> who spent some time in France, away from one of their ch- uh, children. So, uh, mate, um, awesome, awesome advice. Awesome catching up with you. Thanks for coming on the podcast again. Um, like I said, the first one was a great. I think we just topped it. Uh, some real, some real good <laughs> juice in that one. Um, you're an mm. absolute lad. Love, love what you do. Love what you're about. Um, you always, you're always open and honest with where you're at and and rugby and what you want to achieve. So, uh, and you, I know you spoke about Bodie highly, but I'm sure he'd speak highly about you. Um, playing inside you is is something pretty special, which um, some guys are lucky enough to experience. But it's been awesome having you on the podcast, mate. And um, yeah. Looking forward to following the rest of your journey. Cheers, team. Cheers, bro. Appreciate it. You're a lad. <laughs>